Hi, I'm Paul Sellers. I'm here in my garden and um, I just want to show you how you're going to build your workbench using just ordinary everyday stuff. Uh, I've got a couple of sawhorses but we'll also use Black & Decker Workmate, something like that. Just to glue up our bench top, plane the surfaces, get them ready for building the complete bench. So I've brought my wood over here. I, um, I'm checking it out. I want to eyeball it, see if there's any twist in the wood, any cups and bows. Now you don't have to get all the cups and bows out. If you had several boards that were twisted, then that could translate into a twisted top. But generally, even if they're not straight, we're not trying to straighten them so much now, is we're just taking out these surface defects that came from the machine, because the machine is crammed through the machine and it's uh, really um, damaged really on the surface. So we want to take out any surface damage from the machine. So I just set my plane shallow, whisk off a few shavings like this. Once I've got this first part done, bump up against any solid surface. It could be a wall, it could be a tree. Good sharp plane. And uh, as long as it's not too windy, your shavings will probably stay where they are. So I'm taking off the whole surface nice and smooth. A couple of knots there. These knots on spruce and uh, hybrid woods can be hard on your tool. Don't worry about this top edge. You don't need to do anything on that top edge. Do the other face. Number four plane or a four and a half. I'm using a four and a half. It's a little bit wider. See here, knotted area. But you don't I don't have to take every ounce of that out. So that's the first one done. So that gives me almost a two inch width. In Europe, the wood will be nearer one and three quarters thick. In America, it'll be one and a half. You get a little bit short to change there. Next one. This shouldn't take you really very long. This is real woodworking. When you take a stroke, don't stop and then pull back because it'll leave a staggered surface. Lift up on the heel of your plane like this. Lift up every stroke. Get back here. Wonderful. This makes a, a very stout workbench. Any of the pines, firs, any of those kind of woods, they're wonderful for making a workbench from, so don't let anybody persuade you that they're not as good as oak or cherry or walnut. Knots again. If you're playing sharp, it'll probably stay sharp long enough to do the whole of your bench top laminations. Each of the slabs that we're making is uh, 12 inches overall width. Just to make sure you know what we're trying to get rid of, on this surface here it's got some marks left by the pressure bar that feeds the wood through the machine. So in other words this wood wasn't quite thick enough so the pressure bar has left those bar marks in the surface of the wood. So those have to come out because they'll stop the glue surfaces from forming between the two the two pieces of wood. Here again this is saw kerf and some more saw kerf here and this is lower than this surface here so I have to take this surface down to that surface to make sure I get an even film of glue over all the surface and that that's really all we're trying to do with this so it's just surfacing uh, I could use a, a larger plane like a number five or a five and a half a longer plane 
but that would make it much more difficult for me to plane the, the surface the way I want it planing. There's enough flex in, in this type of wood that when you glue it and clamp it, that it, it will never separate after that. So don't worry about getting these boards pristinely straight. That's not what we're aiming for. So now we've got all the surfaces planed on the laminated pieces. Now we've got to create a table. This is, this is just two sawhorses, but it could just as easily be your kitchen table. Uh, a picnic bench would be great. Two benches back to back with a board across anything. I'm just using MDF, which I think is about all MDF is any good for. And uh, I'm going to bring my pieces in and, and check them now. I wanted to have a clear stock, and I picked this. It's impossible to get clear stock from this scant, uh, but I'm just going to pick my best surfaces for the top. So I'm looking at the edges first, there's a hard knot there. The knots won't really matter because we're never going to plane these again once we've surfaced this. That's good, that's good. A mm, bit rugged that one. I'm going to put this one to the back edge. Clear, fairly clear, like this. And I'm going to squeeze these together like that. If I can hand hold a gap closed like this then the glue for sure and the, um, the clamps will definitely pull it together without putting undue or building into this bench top any undue pressure. So I'm going to do a, a dry run. We call it a dry run, I like the word rehearsal because the rehearsal preps your clamps, the rehearsal Make sure that you can see what's likely to happen when you're clamping the, pro you know, clamping the uh, project together. So here, you can preset your clamps if you want to. Always a good practice. So that looks good. Now here you can see this. If I show you, exaggerate this a little bit. When you're clamping up, you can clamp problems into your worktop. I'm dead level here, but on this side I've got some stair steps all the way up, one after the other. That means down here I've got stair steps going the opposite way. And I've got to get those out, so to get those out, I can move down here and level these. And this is where your rehearsal comes in, because you want to make sure that you can get rid of these stair steps. Absolutely critical because otherwise you're going to have a, a twisted top. And a twisted top takes a lot of work to get out. So flush these. Now it's gone and I'm straight here. So that means that end, I have to now look at that end because I may still need to do a little work on this end. You can never have enough clamps, you know that. If you don't know it now, you soon will. And, uh, but we'll need about eight clamps to do this whole bench, I think. So here again, I'm going to use my fist. You can use a hammer, a rubber hammer, dead blow, whatever. Just get these as flush. Now, when you come to gluing this together, the glue is likely to cause the pieces to float a little bit. So you do have to be careful with that. What I'm going to do here is just eyeball this here. Ooh, that's perfect. I don't have any twist in that surface. And that's so important. You do not want twist in your bench top because the bench top is so strong that it's going to affect uh, the frame when you put it together. So I've got no twist and I am ready to glue. Alright, so I'm going to take the clamp off here. I want to make sure I put these back in the same sequence that I picked them out, so it's very simple. On all my laminations I do a V going from point to a wide. Every time I put these together I can glue up perfectly. Without thinking, you don't need to be thinking too much, you need to have it rehearsed 
by the time you get to this point so you know exactly how things are going to go. So I have to take these out of the way so I can set my clamps first. Like this. My clamps are going to go on the underside and on the top. And I'll explain that as I go. So I'm doing my underside first. I want my clamps about every foot, so I'm starting five inches, three, four, five inches in from each end. This will give me what I need. So I place these back in or near the clamps. These will be the last ones that I add. But these are the first ones. Like this. So I'm going to lay these down. Now this is my method of gluing up. You could use a paint roller, one of those little mini rollers, but this will give me perfectly even uh, glue surface throughout the hole. A simple zigzag like this and that glue will go evenly throughout my surfaces. When I've done this one, I'm going to go along the length here. You don't want to starve your joint, you need enough glue on there, but then neither do you want to put too much glue on there. Oops, wrong way. So I've got these flushed at the end. Now I'm doing mine pretty much dead to length, uh, but I've left a little bit on each end, a half inch is enough. So one inch longer than the finished length of the bench so you can cut this to length because it's very hard to get your laminations to finish up exactly the same length by gluing up. So that's plenty, plenty, plenty of glue really there. together, slide it just to even out the glue, make sure these ends get the glue too. Now I'm going to lie this down, you can see my V there, I'm going to flush the ends up. This is going to start drying and grabbing inside so I have to work quite quickly. Go the full width with your wiggly line, go as near to the edge as you can without running over. Quite an art gluing up. I live near the sea so you can hear seagulls in the background. Rub again, like this. Flush it and next one. I think this is uh, one of the best benches I've ever worked on, and I've worked on one of these for now. This will be my 49th year of working on this bench and um, I've worked on many others. I've worked on some very fancy benches but you'll see with a quick release metal vise on here it'll knock the socks off any bench you've ever worked on probably. I love it. Okay, you can see having my clamps set 
but now I've expanded a little bit because I do have glue in there try and work as neatly as you can the glue will start dripping on the other side but don't worry about that we'll be able to wipe it off that's why we kept the shavings underneath so we could use those to clean off some of the glue this piece here is going to be the inside of the well probably and we'll be talking about well boards and aprons and all the strategy that makes this bench so ridly, rigidly uh, strong it's the apron on these benches and that's what's been dismissed with a lot of benches that I've worked on and seen is that rigidity is, is just so phenomenal rub it just to even out the glue and be conscious now of this twist again so important flush everything as best you can this is still floating so we're in good shape here remember if you if your clamps not square then the chances are you'll clamp your wood out of square so I start cinching this up, but I don't cinch it tight, I just start to add pressure. Put my clamps tight up. I'm using aluminium clamps, which is, uh, they work great, these clamps. I really like them. I've got some stagger here, so I'm going to start fixing that fairly early on. That end is fairly flush, so it's really just a question of pulling up some of this end and if you're in a bind you can always pack your clamps so that they the table is out of square. I think we're going to be fine here. Keep your eye on both ends. See, this is floating and this is distorted a little bit here. So I'm going to go on with my clamp on this end. Great. So I still haven't clamped this too tight yet. Good, good here, good here, pretty good here. This end still bothers me a little bit, so I'm going to add a clamp underneath and lift this end here, like this, so that those pieces will drop down. And then I'm going to just tap these down so I get somewhere near the bush. Blue's already grabbed there. Don't give up, just keep persevering. I can hear the glue now easing and oozing. And I can add more clamps once I've got these on. 
I can add more clamps if I need to. If I've got gaps, there are no gaps here really. glued up. Feel happy with that. Just check it now for twist. It looks great. Wonderful. So one more clamp under here and I'm done. So that's the bench top glued up. Just use your shavings to wipe off the excess glue just to even it out. It'll help the, the drying process inside. It'll stop it from slowing down and then um, It'll also be easier for you to plane your pieces, your laminated tops after. I think I did say, but you can glue all eight to all the um, laminations for both bench tops with the same set of clamps at the same time. But it is difficult to get that many uh, clamps uh, uh, pieces together without the glue starting to set up before you can handle it. So. This is the first in the section, the series that we're going to do just to pull together a workbench, a real workbench for real woodworking, for real woodworkers. And uh, I think you're going to enjoy the next sequence that will be coming.